the screen. Somebody has joined in. Okay, so um, we are going to first talk about the overview of Power BI. So the tagline of Power BI is business intelligence like never before. So firstly, it is definitely the intelligence. Just give me a second. I thought somebody's joined in. It's business intelligence that we are deriving like never before. Why do we say like never before? Because because prior to prior to um, Power BI, there were other uh, business in, uh, business intelligence tools like uh, SQL. Um, MSQL, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what was the, uh, and definitely Excel was there. So what were the, what are the shortcomings of these tools with com in comparison to Power BI? So definitely there is a lot of expertise that is required in order to write commands in SQL, even though it's a query language only, still you have to be, you have to have a fair understanding before you start writing queries in um, SQL. So, um, I mean, a lot of expertise is required and it ain't possible that um, we are just learning and we can practice at the same time. It requires, after one point in time only you can start curating meaningful results from your learnings in sql especially whereas in power bi the moment you started learning you can start creating meaningful insights you can start deriving meaningful insights from your data and more so even if the other person is not aware is not pro at power bi can still understand from your dashboard from your report very easily it doesn't require, it isn't a rocket science. Why? Because, I mean, not why, but uh, because uh, Microsoft has developed this tool with um, for ease of the users, right? So let's see at the definition. So what is business intelligence? Business intelligence is a combination of data mining, data analysis, data visualization, using some data tools and infrastructure to help organizations to make more data-driven decisions. So it's a business intelligence, a combination of data mining. What do we mean by data? We all have data. And like I was talking about it in the last session as well, like we were talking about in the last session as well, that data mining is all about really um, diving deep into the data. So uh, on the face of it, it's very easy to derive whatever is there on the face of it. I mean, anybody can do it. That these are the sales, summation of sales. These are the summation of um, profit. I mean, what is the cost, et cetera, et cetera. But I mean, how dirty you can get your hands on data. So in Japanese, in my early days of childhood, I had read one um, story which said that why are Japanese so successful? Because they do not measure the depth of the ocean by sitting at the um, at the land, I mean, not at the beach. So they actually go into the center of the ocean and from there they measure the depth of the ocean. So you have to get your hands dirty if you really want to get into analytics and um, data analysis. So data mining becomes very important that unless and until you are ready to get into, get your mind boggled with your data, it ain't um, going to be helpful. So Power BI, is an artificial intelligence tool, but at still uh, at the mercy of the user. Then definitely analyzing data. So as we are going to learn uh, uh, Power BI uh, further on in our sessions, we will um, gauge that Power BI helps us in data analytics, deriving quick insights, uh, and basic literature or things like that, Power BI can automatically provide us because it understands your data and over a period of time, as you're going to build reports, it'll further derive insights from your data and it'll give you more 
um, intelligible uh, quick insights then last one is data visualization they say um, that a picture speaks a thousand words more than the words themselves so that is why powerpoint and uh, these tools have uh, gained quite a bit of significance in last uh, few years because uh, you can create um, creative um, uh, visuals etc in order to speak up whatever you want to probably present you would want to speak up or uh, you would want to present but presenting it into a more visual format more appealing format so business intelligence it's a combination of data mining data analysis and data visualization using some data tools and infrastructure to help organizations make more data driven decisions even though jeff bezos uh, once said in his uh, biography uh, autobiography or biography i don't remember that that most of the decisions almost 95% of the decisions in the world are taken by gut but still um, if your gut feeling is uh, backed by data nothing like that so um, why are all these things important why is data analysis important because it gives you a basis to prove your facts um, in my current organization i'm not going to name the organization so it hasn't been very long since i joined and i have joined as a business transformation um, lead etc so um, the first few the first impression of the organization was that they are talking i mean with no basis i mean all whatever they are talking whatever solutions they are providing they are not based on any data so definitely no matter how strong your gut feeling could be but definitely you need to prove your gut feeling basis your data so in my previous organization because i had spent quite a bit of time i mean more than a decade in my processes so i had such a good hold of that that as a result um, i really didn't need to prove my uh, decisions and whatever uh, i mean they say that you develop that sixth sense with respect to your data but definitely i used to back it by data because it it used to help uh, convince my stakeholders to proceed ahead with the um, project so it becomes very important that you start loving your data unless you build a bond with your data trust me your uh, data is always going to run in different direction than you are um what is big data so we all keep uh, talking about big data scientists big data scientists so in fact few years back i met somebody and um, that lady told me that her um, future husband i mean that her husband uh, at that time fiance was a big data scientist in canada only and i used to wonder what exactly is big data and how is it different from our current data and that is when i when i really started looking into it that normally what we process on excel versus what we are going to process on power bi so it's it's i mean there are few characteristics that actually identify that create a differentiation between um, the two things so definitely big data is backed by volume a volume would mean not processing like uh, 10000 or 20000 rows but it would mean 40000 50000 one um, 1 million or more than that <clears throat> why is it uh, um, 1 million and above i mean uh, most of us would have worked on excel and would have realized that the the day the moment uh, we are going to increase the number of rows in our excel our excel would start hanging and the discus would keep rotating and revolving and rotating and revolving and at one given point in time the excel would close and no matter whatever work we done if we we not saved we are having a bad day trust me it's going to, we are going to lose all that data so big data is definitely defined by volume how big your data is i cannot say that 1 million rows is a big data or 10 million rows is a big data but definitely volume is something that defines what a big data is that is why we are seeing so many uh, analytics tools like r python tableau power bi <clears throat> in market these days because they can handle big data
Excel definitely is one of the most leading products of Microsoft, but because it has its own limitations and they cannot just do away with it because it's one of the best selling uh, products in the Microsoft suite. They are selling it as a Microsoft suite part. So uh, definitely they cannot do away with it. And Microsoft has had the opportunity to introduce this. Uh, I think Tableau was acquired by Salesforce some time back, some years back. So uh, these are the tools that we have in the market in order to process the big data. So volume is definitely one thing. Then comes our variety. In Excel, we can only process usually the um, text format, whatever is this. So big data can be image, video, mails, PDF, audio. So again, in my current organization, um, uh, what we are doing is definitely it's a uh, um, just uh, SAP solution that we are implementing. So the um, OCR that is, uh, sorry, the invoice that is ingested by the vendor is read through the OCR, which is, uh, um, I mean, which reads the, um, the scanned invoices, et cetera, uh, extracts data from there and uh, uh, ingests that in our SAP uh, platform. So similarly, um, big data is also like that, um, even if it's an image, video, emails, PDF, audio, the data can be in any of the format, but you still are uh, processing that in the, um, and to derive meaningful insights, velocity. The speed of generation of data in Excel definitely, if the number of rows are like 10, 20, 100, 800, you can expect the um, speed to be very high and um, there are no issues. The moment the number of rows increase, the issues start cropping up. So how speedily we are able to uh, um, generate data, how speedily we are going to process our data definitely makes all the difference, right? Then comes our variability. Inconsistency, which can be shown by data at times. So like we done in a Power Query session that, uh, at times, there could be um, a JSON file. It can be X, XML format. A data could be in any format. There can be a lot of inconsistencies. Now, Excel cannot handle inconsistencies. However, there are inbuilt um, functionalities in our Power BI overall tool, wherein we can, uh, even if there are inconsistencies in data at time, we can, I mean, inconsistent. when there is inconsistency, we cannot process the data. So you have to align your data in one format and then you can process it. But we have the tools uh, through which we can do that. Now, what is Power BI? Power BI was essentially available to public in 2015. However, it was launched in 2014. As an advanced tool. It empowers the end users for business intelligence. So uh, I'm not sure how many of you really practiced Power Query uh, that we did last uh, week. So um, you would have realized that I'm not sure what your experience would have been, but for my previous batches, almost for everybody, when people are practicing immediately after the session or within a day or so, so they realize that um, the scare that is created around um, usually um, before we are learning any new tool, etc. Uh, for Power BI, it's not the same because from the first um, from the first go, you start feeling that yes, I can do it. So it empowers the end users for BI. BI. So at any given point in time, you'll not feel that you are stuck that you have to memorize a lot of things, et cetera. In DAX, definitely you would have to do it, but at least until some given point in DAX, DAX um, so for Power Query, Power BI, and some portion of DAX, you would feel that it's doable. It's a self-service tool. You really do not need anyone's support to uh, really uh, help you with Power BI. One-click reports. You will realize as we proceed ahead that it's a one-click report. Um, basic reports you can create just at uh, one click of a button on your mouse. You really don't have to um, pull in a lot of data from files, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Once data, main data has been pulled in, you can create a lot of visuals just at one click. 
the basic service for power bi is free the basic package that you can get definitely in that basic package uh, there are a lot of things still available but uh, but you cannot access i think cloud etc uh, no you cannot uh, assign users etc in your basic package but still there are a lot of functionalities which are available for free but uh, in the pro version is available for 9.99 per month uh, for per user of the pro version and it's a cloud based model so what do we mean by cloud based model microsoft has its own cloud and you really do not have to um, um, go out and upload your files in um, some other server you can completely update them on the microsoft cloud only so if you're going out for a meeting and you've um, forgotten your laptop at home so if your report is on um, cloud you can take someone else's uh, laptop whosoever is available and you can present do the presentation you really do not have need of your laptop available with you at all times one of the um, consequences that i feel or the shortcomings i feel is that you can only use your work or educational emails so you cannot log in with your gmail or with any of your personal email ids you really need to have your work or educational email even for work um, uh, educational email i think a lot of uh, uh, you have to upload i'm not sure but you at one given point in time you had to upload your id card etc i think i'm not sure if it's still applicable but um, you cannot um, access it through uh, your gmail etc quick insights i really love this feature of quick insights they definitely are as the name suggests they are only quick insights only nothing in depth but uh, to begin with it's not a bad deal that uh, it can give you what is there on the face of it and through that what is available on the face of it you can develop your uh, understanding further on real time dashboard updates so what exactly is a dashboard any would like anyone would like to chime in is a dashboard dashboard what we get on the screen that is the dashboard uh what we get on the screen is a dashboard yeah okay so, um i chat and the graphical just give me a second um right uh, uh, so you are prasanna right yes yes prasanna was speaking okay so uh, there's more to dashboard uh, prasanna and thank you for um, for your response so a dashboard is your one pager kind of a thing so a report can have many pages but your dashboard is generally a one pager thing that we build from our reports like um whenever we are building a flyer our flyer is usually a one pager right and whatever what whatever is the most important thing that we would want to update therein we want to do that so a dashboard only has your uh, uh, most important highlights so when your management if if you're appearing for a meeting or a presentation definitely you'll send in your uh, 14 page 10 page report in built in power power bi but you are also supposed to send a dashboard as well which is going to be your one page one slider one page thing wherein there are going to be your main key visuals that you are going to plot so those plots uh, those visuals you are not going to create them separately the visuals that you are creating in your report you only have to right click and pin those for the dashboard thing no major steps but a quick dashboard is something that something that gives your management a quick insight that okay this is what i can expect from the report so if you are going to send a report beforehand to your management trust me if somebody is sitting at a senior director level or any other level at a decision making level they are not going to scroll through 14 pages of your report before the meeting and trust me i mean scrolling through reports can be very uh, tedious task i'm not sure how many of you ha really have gone through reports but these company annual and quarterly reports no matter how important they are but they they are just too irritating 
right? So dashboard really helps in. So you would have seen that whenever a merger or acquisition is happening, definitely there are eight keys, there are um, um, proxy filings, there are a lot of other um, um, shareholder communication, etc. A lot of uh, filings that are filed for the regulators, for the shareholders, for a lot of other people who, who have vested interest in that merger or acquisition. However, there is also a merger presentation. What is that merger presentation? It's a quick slider only with the key insights to the merger. It will not have all the details. For all the details, you really have to go into the report only. But that merger presentation will have the key insights. Now, that is very helpful. So when I used to work in my previous organization, because I was handling the data for uh, mergers and acquisitions in capital market, I was leading a team um, which was um, handling the client uh, interaction, etc. So the merger, merger presentation is really helpful because that provides you before you actually start uh, diving deep into a 400 pager uh, merger and acquisition proxy filing, et cetera, you can get a quick insight from the merger presentation. It could give you what exactly is the valuation, how we are going to calculate, et cetera, et cetera, will be found in the proxy filings. But what is the valuation? What are Who all are the advisors? What has been the revenue, et cetera, you would find there. Similarly, here you can create a dashboard and the moment you're going to up, uh, update make any changes in your report because your dashboard is created from your report only your changes will start reflecting in your dashboard as well so it's not as if key if i've created a dashboard once it's a um, lining on the stone no it's not that so the moment you're going to update your report your dashboard will keep updating then comes your it's a secure and live connection to data so what happens is uh, um, whenever we are uploading our uh, uh, file on the power bi so quite possibly you might have this uh, um, i mean you might be afraid of the fact that i'm uploading my company data on microsoft cloud but it's a secure and live connection i mean nobody can take 100 percent guarantee that your data is secure or uh, safe these days um so many servers are getting hacked etc i don't know what's gonna happen but usually it's a secure and live connection to data so you can upload your data on cloud and then it helps you with predictive analysis as well though to be very honest and open and don't quote me anywhere i'm not very big fan of predictive analysis of power bi and any of the microsoft tools that are there so far um, I still would like to go by mini tab, etc. But or in case you have some uh, experience in statistical uh, analytics, etc., then it's going to be helpful because human experience or intelligence is required in predictive analysis. These tools are not so advanced that they can really help you with that. But uh, fair enough. If there is an option, my job is to introduce you to that. Why Power BI is beneficial over traditional BI tools? The traditional BI tools are difficult to use. So which all are the traditional tools like MSPI, SQL, Cognos, Quick, um, uh, Qlik View, Informatica, SQL Server Reporting Services, Spotfire. So all these are difficult to use. Trust me, I haven't used all of them except for the fact the SQL. So for me, even SQL was a bit tricky. Um, I, I cannot say that I'm at the advanced level because uh, I mean, SQL requires certain level of expertise <clears throat> and a um, lot of practice. And like we discussed in the beginning, Power BI does not require some, <clears throat> from the day one, we can start deriving meaningful insights, but in SQL, they, it, it becomes, it is a bit complicated. So who all have used SQL before? So I would assume nothing here. <laughs> I don't know what to derive out of silence here. Anyways, um, it requires huge investment. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are audible. OK, thanks, Prasanna. So uh, it requires huge investment. Uh, the, all these um, products are not free, like Power BI is the basic version is a free one. So. 
this is not um, the all these products are not available for free just give me a second so i'm getting so all these products are not free whereas the basic version of power bi is definitely free so this requires huge in these products require a huge huge investment but with power bi with basic investment or no investment like basic investment like putting into a laptop or a, um, this thing internet which mostly people have uh, at least until um, to one cities so um so uh, these uh, <clears throat> products require huge investment and definitely they are not for the end users so if i am into development and i send this to my manager some analysis so my manager even in case they do not have any experience with sql etc the the only thing that they can guide me is that they want x data if i were to expect them to make start making changes they cannot do that with any even with any basic knowledge because they require these tools require a lot of uh, expertise etc in order to really reach at a level where you can start making changes whereas with power bi like i said from the first day itself you can start uh, deriving meaningful insights how traditional bi tools work so like one of the officers is using excel another is using sql oracle text and others now the process is extraction transformation and loading now that happens at head office because all the offices are using different um, products and then uh, the data is assimilated at one place and then it is uh, uh, created into one single version and then you can start creating reports etc however with uh, power bi as we'd seen in the a power query file that we can pull data from different sources that functionality is available in excel also that you can pull data from pdf from oracle azure etc but definitely in traditional bi tools they are those functionalities are not available so in case somebody is pulling data from oracle or somebody from sql and another one from excel it becomes very difficult to assimilate data at one place what all are the benefits of power bi um okay if i were not to show you uh, the what all are the benefits anyone would like to take a stab uh, what all could be the benefits okay again silence so um power bi boosts productivity like we've been talking about that uh, uh, it gives us quick insights it's a one click report that means you do not have to make an effort to pull visuals differently from uh, uh, like we have to do in other these things um, other tools etc so you yourself will feel that uh, once we start working on the visuals etc that it boosts productivity um probably um, using excel or um, other uh, traditional bi tools we have to make a lot of effort and more so because excel runs on rows it tends to be very slow whereas power bi runs on uh, columns so it tends to be more faster and our job gets done relatively easily so that is why it boosts productivity it helps to gain sales and market intelligence what do we mean by intelligence um there are a lot of tools that are available there on power bi like scatter diagram it actually tells us that where is it uh, that most of our customers are centered at what should be our focal point it will tell us what all are our outliers etc so those in that intelligence that we derive from there we can really uh, cash upon those that intelligence results are closer to established goals so whatever goals you've set for yourself like uh, um before actually working on any of the reports tools etc 
sorry um, before we actually start creating a report it becomes very important to and uh, to really establish goals that what is it that we are looking to derive from that i mean at times what happens is that uh, we are creating a report and trust me you're going to love power bi i'm not sure what has your experience been with power query but power bi is something you're going to love it why because there are so many visuals and once you just get a um, like 10 uh, 15 minutes of hang of it you're going to love it love creating uh, visuals how to derive qna quick insights etc etc so um, but there is a flip side as well that while we are creating visuals etc we tend to just go with the flow and we tend to get very overwhelmed with it so what is the flip side there that uh, because we usually go with the flow then what will happen is that um, uh, we probably might tend to lose the vision why we are creating this report so it becomes very important before you start working on a report that you have some established goals you have built in some goals that uh, you, that you will achieve from this report so whatever goals you set in the results that you are going to generate are going to be closer to those established goals gain insights into consumer behavior so like we were talking about to uh, second point to gain sales and market intelligence that was definitely from the business perspective then you gain insights from the consumer behavior perspective as well that what is it that consumers are focusing on what is it that they want definitely you get return on investment if you're working on the uh, basic version with least uh, investment you are getting you can derive uh returns then uh, the last one of the last benefits definitely you might see many more benefits uh, it turns data into actionable information so a lot of companies are sitting on a lot of data in last few years you would have noticed that data is one of the most talked about thing data analytics and um, here in canada um, the boot camp course that is provided by university of toronto it's a 8 month course i guess and i don't remember the number of hours and the number of days but it's 11000 uh, canadian dollars so it's almost like 6 lakh 60000 yeah 6 lakh 60000 so it's damn expensive so because why because there is so much of hype around data data analytics etc that everybody wants to get into it so power bi turns your data into actionable information what are the challenges power bi helps with never ending we look up formulas so in power query also you would have noticed that we are merging queries appending data etc what is it uh, all about it is nothing but your we look up edge look up only right so power bi helps with never ending we look up formulas excel slows down due to large files so one thing one of the differences that i've been talking about uh, since last session between power bi and excel has been one basic difference so anyone would like to take a stab here what is excel that one on, difference excel works on uh, rows and uh, or works on the columns awesome prasanna thank you so much uh, you very right so excel works on rows and uh, power bi works on columns so excel tends to slow down the moment your data is going to increase so from 500 to 1000 to 10000 you're bound to face issues with your excel no matter how much you try creating separate files pulling the data etc but the moment even if you're pulling at a common space you're going to experience slowness due to large files but with power bi uh, you're not going to experience because it can handle big data and big data can be anything large amount of data and um, uh, it it isn't impacted by the count of the rows but yes it is impacted by the count of columns so that is why we create smaller tables such that so we can pull information from other tables and 
we are not experiencing any issues cumbersome excel sort and filter so you will realize in the power bi the moment we get into the visuals part that it's uh, creating um, filter slicer here in um, power bi is not a tricky task static presentations so in power bi you can create dynamic presentations dynamic presentations would mean uh, the moment you're going to change data it's automatically automatically going to get updated and uh, i mean there is a linkage between all the charts that we have created visuals that we've presented on our screen in excel the a new chart is introduced once in a year whereas a new uh, visual is introduced in power bi every quarter so definitely you have a lot of variety with respect to the uh, visuals where are they available we'll talk about it recently i was going through one of the posts in linkedin so that girl had compiled a list of uh, new visuals that had been added into the uh, um, in power bi in last some time and i think i took the screenshot of that and i think i've lost it deleted it but yes quite a uh, that was an, that was interesting that some people take so much of interest so like i said we cannot uh, uh, get expertise until we are ready to get our hands dirty i hope until here i know it's very theoretical but hopefully everybody is uh, on same page with me okay any doubt any question anyone has until now okay so i think because nobody else um, said anything i no one else said anything so i would assume that we all are good so what are what all are the capabilities yeah somebody is trying to say something no okay our capabilities of power bi definitely um, it's a machine learning tool then it provides us with the mobility and providing with us with the advanced analytics it's a lower upfront cost we can customize our uh, visuals etc and it's a user friendly tool so i'm not going to dwell very deep into it because somewhere down the line we've already covered the slide in our previous slides what all are the components of power bi we do have this in excel as well but um, we have these components in um, power bi as well so it's a power map power query power pivot and power bi um you all have downloaded your power bi desktop so we're not going to cover that there are few uh, blogs that are there on edu for sure's website so uh, please feel free to go through those then comes our next portion what is called what is schema a schema is the organization or the structure of database it represents the logical view of a whole database what all are the types of schema it can be a star schema or a snowflake schema so i'll show that to you what exactly do we mean by schema so this is my already created file that i have and i'll show you the schema so this is one of my main tables that i have created remember i think we've done this in the last session only we've created uh, the main table which is our fact table and in that fact table because we have all the uh, primary keys and they are the foreign keys for other tables we have connected these tables so forget the calendar table for now and just focus on uh, fact table we have order table customer table product table and location table so we have a center and we have four tables that are attached to the other ones right now that becomes your kind of a star format so what is the schema as we were learning it's the organization or structure of a database so this is the structure of our database where all the tables are connected with one center table 
these tables are not connected amongst themselves forget the calendar table because we i am i'll tell you about the calendar table in the dax session but until then all these tables are uh, connected uh, through fact table but they are not connected uh, amongst themselves right so it represents the logical view this is the logical view that they are not uh, connected amongst each self uh, each other but we are one common table what are the type of schema star schema so if i were to look at this picture i have one table in the center one branch is going here one is the customer table one is location table and one is product table had there been table somewhere up there down there so it is kind of a star image that i am getting i'm not sure how many of you will are able to imagine it but let me just try and draw it uh, let me draw with a red pen so if this is my fact table and this is my one table this is my another table this is my another table and this is my another table had there been another table here so kind of a star format so this becomes your star schema what is your snowflake schema snowflake schema is that this table has another table this table has another table similarly this table has another table and this has another table similarly all other uh, dimensions could have further other tables as well that becomes your snowflake schema we are going to learn about it so let me just remove this that becomes a um, snowflake schema let's learn more about it so there are two tables person table and order table now these are two separate tables how are we going to connect these two tables um our person table has unique information with respect to the person id so like just imagine that in our office we all have employee ids why do we have employee ids because somebody might have the same name surname middle name etc everything could be same right how are we going to differentiate between the two we are going to differentiate between the two through uh, your um, employee id so uh, here in canada um, when i moved in i was just trying i was going through one of the facebook posts uh, that uh, that was posted on one of the groups uh, indians indian groups so um, usually one of the communities especially uh, one of the communities but they have very common names so uh, that lady had posted that um, somebody else is having a same name and uh, she went to one of the leading banks national um, i think scotia bank or whichever bank she went to um she went to get an account open but apparently with her details there was already another account open and probably that person does not have a very good um, credit score like we have civil score in india here they call it a uh, credit score so she said that now i cannot even get my um, account open so i mean even if uh, I, i i'm not sure about the much of the integrities there but just sharing one example here so that is why um, employee id becomes very important such that so um, you might be um, director or ceo of a company but uh, there's another person with the same name in the organization who's probably a new joiner so your ceo ceo salary shares that are assigned do not go into the um, new researcher anybody else's account so definitely we have the employee ids to differentiate similarly here we have a differentiating factor becomes our person id that becomes our primary key now why is this primary key important because it helps us uh, pull the data from the other table now here it is a primary key here it becomes a foreign key right so when we are going to match like in excel we do we look up it will give us the order number and the order id against the corresponding person information right so the slide says notice that person id column in the order table to the person id column in the person table the person id column in the person table is the primary key 
whereas in the order table it becomes a foreign key the foreign key constraint prevents invalid data from being inserted into foreign key column because it has to be one of the values contained in the parent table so here if we would have person id as four as well but because we do not have a person id four here the data would not have been ingested in the table why because there was not a there was no corresponding value in the order table what is a fact table a fact table consists of the measurements matrix or facts of a business process and it contains two types of column the foreign key column allows to join with dimension table and measure column contain the data that is being applied sorry so uh, the fact table it consists of the foreign keys that helps to extract data from the other tables so this becomes our fact table what is a dimension table? They contain dimension keys, values, and attributes. One data set can have multiple dimensions. I hope we are clear so far. Perfect, assuming it to be correct. So this is how our star format star schema looks like. There is a fact table in the center. We have dimension table. And see, these tables are not connected to each other. They are only connected through fact table. And they are not connected separately. So a star schema is a data warehouse where the center of the star can have one fact table with a number associated with a number of associated dimension table around the fact table. It is known as star schema as a structure resembles a star. The simplest type of data warehouse schema, it is optimized for querying large data sets. In star schema, a fact table consists keys to every dimension table and other quantitative attributes. The dimension table are not joined to each other. It's easy to understand and provides optimal disk usage. The schema is widely supported by BI tools and they are not normalized. This comes across as our snowflake schema where we have, uh, so I'll again use a pen. So until here, it's a star schema. Right now, the moment we are going to add these dimensions, that one of the dimension table has further dimension table, then it becomes your snowflake schema. So until here, until here, it's a star schema. Right, the moment this is added, your entire structure becomes snowflake. Okay. okay perfect so uh, a snowflake schema is an extension of star schema it adds additional dimensions the dimension tables are normalized which splits data into additional tables one fact table surrounded by dimension table which are in turn surrounded by dimension table it uses smaller disk space due to multiple tables query performance is reduced and we need to perform more maintenance efforts because of the more lookup tables because in case i have to pull location id uh, or the region so I'm going to pull from fact table. I'll, I'm going to go to dimension table and this dimension table will further pull information from this dimension table. So just imagine how many references I would need to give. That first in my query, I'll have to give a reference of the fact table. In that I'm going to connect with the dimension table and further I'm going to connect into the dimension table. So it becomes a bit more complicated because there are multiple tables, query performance is reduced. Cardinality, it refers to um, what are, are the types. It refers to the uniqueness of data values contained in a particular column of a database column. So there could be a one-to-one -one relationship, one-to-many, many-to-one, and many-to-many. -many. Confidence interval, we'll come to it when we start with the Power BI. Anyone has any doubt so far? Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, Prasanna. So let's start with our visuals now. Now we'll start with our Power BI. So if you don't mind, can I take a break of like five minutes? Thanks.
So I'm back. Is everybody else also here? Our five minutes are here. We're almost on time. So let's start. Prasanna, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Arun Pushpanjali, Indra, Neelam, Kripan, Vijay. Yes. Super. Okay. Vijay, Indra, and Pushpanjali, please ping on chat in case you're back. Thanks, Arun. Okay. So I'm assuming they are here or not. I'm not sure. Let's start. Okay. So um, this is our report view. So as we've already discussed, we have a left panel, we have a right panel. In our right panel, we have three pins. One is here. One is my filter pane, visualization pane, and data pane. Just give me a second, guys. So these are the three pins that we have. <clears throat> filter pane, visualization pane, and data pane. So in visualization pane, we are going to mostly work with visualization pane with little bit of def definitely we are going to pull data from the data pane and in case there are any filters that we are going to apply. Now visualization pane has almost like 30 to 40, 35 to 40 visuals that are there. These are static ones. Then you'll see three dots. What are the these three dots, these are nothing. But when I click on these three dots and I, when I say get more visuals, I'll be taken to, okay. I haven't logged in, oops. I need to sign in. It'll just give me a second. I don't know what's the issue. Um, so when you click on these three dots, you can try it at your end. When you mention get more visuals, it will take you to a marketplace. In that marketplace, you can uh, order anything for free. Now that anything would mean more visuals, definitely not more. <laughs> Uh, nothing else though so you can have any of the visuals for free uh, why do we have only limited visuals here because these are the most frequently ones used and definitely in case you're looking for more customized visuals you can get them from marketplace and definitely like i said before they are free so um uh, then let's start with our stat bar chart I'll start with this. So this is my clustered column chart. In order to pull any of the visual from your visualization to the window pane, you simply need to go to any of the visuals. Simply left click on that and you have the visual here. Now I have the basic visual here. I have to just put in some data. So I'll go to the data tab. I have clicked on my FT table. Uh, kindly ignore a lot of measures and other things that you see here. Uh, this is my other file that I usually work with. But sales data, you also have. We need to click on the sales number. And we are going to click from the customer table. We are going to pull the segment data. So see, we have the visual ready with us. It states that consumer segment has is giving us a sale of X number. Corporate is giving us a sale of 704,000. Home office is giving us a sale of 429,000. So see how easy was it to build our first visual. Any doubt anyone has in creating the visual? Yes, ma'am. 
Yes, I'll do that. Just give me a second. I'll have. How to bring the first visual into your screen? Left click on any of the visuals. You can left click and drag it anywhere you would want. Now, I would want to see the sales segment wise. So in my data, whatever tables we've created, I simply need to go to the segment, select that, and I can select sales as well. Now, most of the times, you do not have to tell Power BI what should come on X axis and what co should come on Y axis. Definitely, at some given point in time, you will have to explain that to Power BI also what should come. Now, if we go to the visual, if we see in the visualization pane only where my cursor is hovering, let's scroll down. So you will say that automatically it has selected on X axis segment should come and Y axis sum of sales should come. Then we have legend, small multiples, tool tips, drill through, etc. We'll talk about a few of these topics as well as we move forward. But I did not tell Power BI that segment should come on X axis and what should come on Y axis. This is the intelligence. This is one of the aspects of business intelligence that you don't have to tell it. You can expand it. You can reduce the size. You can move it anywhere. Then you'll see this focus mode. this focus mode button. So once you, I'll explain all other things as well as we move uh, forward in a session, but because I showed that to you before, I thought I should let you know. When you click on focus mode, it takes you into this kind of a bigger window, right? So this focus mode is very important when you're in middle of a presentation. I used to use that a lot in my presentations. So on those charts and graphs where I wanted really, uh, lot of emphasis to be put in. I used to put that visual in the focus mode. OK, now see one thing that besides sales, we are seeing a summation sign. Right. So this is the table data that we have. It's a summation sign it means that it is somewhere down the line, uh, line summing up the data. Then uh, let's go to the order table. Under order date, you are seeing this kind of a image. This is called calendar. Why? Because dates are always in the calendar format. So you would see the calendar table here. Besides location, you are seeing this table format. Why? Because this is a table that we had created for location, right? Now you would see, besides this wow, we'll come to this part uh, in DAX session, so don't worry about it. You are seeing a calculator sign. Why we are seeing a calculator sign? Because we've created a measure. And there should be one more. Besides cost, you would see this kind of a signage. This means that we have created a column. So I'll again talk about creating columns as well in our as we move uh, proceed forward. But this is creating a column. You don't need to memorize it, but it's just a good to know thing. So where we left was that this is the intelligence that Power BI has generated, right? Now, uh, just give me a second. Let me see. OK. Next visual is all about asking a question. So uh, when I hover on any of these uh, visuals, there's one visual called Q&A. I hope you can see where my cursor is. The moment I'm going to click on this, let me just pull it a bit above and expand it. Now, my file already has a lot of data. That is why I'm seeing a lot of options. But in case you also have a lot of data, I mean, definitely I have created measures as well. So even if I were to remove those and with the basic data that we have, this Q&A is very, very helpful. How? 
it gives me options it gives me an option to ask a question or it is giving me a starting point what all i can see top location states by total sales let me click on it click and it is not giving me anything not creating a visual okay and i clicked enter and see just by selecting the question it created a visual and if I think this is a beneficial visual, I just created it into a visual. Now I can plot it just in my report. So if I take this in the focus mode, California has, a, has the highest sales, followed by New York, Texas, Washington, Pennsylvania, Florida, Illinois, Ohio, Michigan, <clears throat> Virginia. These are the sales that are, um, I mean, states labeled by sales. I'll repeat it once again. Let me remove this visual. Click on Q&A. What other question can I ask maybe? So it is giving me total sales by category, total sales by for West region, total sales. Let me ask a uh, top customer maybe. Can it answer? Uh, let me see what it gives top customer. So maybe let me say top 10 customers. So right, it is giving me this information. So there's this small, uh, wherever we can see this search bar there is a small um, icon that is there i don't know what this icon looks like but maybe uh, let's see in case i can expand this visual no i cannot there are three different questions or uh, customized questions i'm sorry these are three different questions or customized question questions this yes, I yes. just created. In case you have a question, please uh, let me know. I'll type in that question. Okay, okay, understood. This question I just created okay. randomly. Those okay. three questions that system was pulling in by default. So okay. this top 10 customer I only pulled in. So okay. this button icon I'm going to click in, it is going to turn this into a visual. It's no longer into the QA format. So you're asking a question and you found that beneficial and you can create it into a Q and a uh, visual as well. Right? Make sense? Okay. So this way we've uh, converted our Q and A into a standard visual. Next comes our uh, map and conditional formatting. So let's click on a map. And for map, let me select uh, two variables. One is my sales and one is my location. I'll pull state. Why am I selecting state? Because for a map, I need to have states information, right? So my visual is here. With least effort, I could build my visual. <clears throat> so it is giving me Nevada has uh, <clears throat> some sales. California has some other sales. New York has some other sales, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. So this is how we've built uh, our sales. Now, one thing that I'm supposed to cover is that California and New York has highest sales. What we can do is let's go back to our visual and click on these three dots and let's say show as table it will show my data in a tabular format so california has a sale of 456,000. new york has sale of 310,000. the third highest sale that texas is given is giving is 169,000. so you can see that new york is almost double a little less than double california is way higher than so California and New York are kind of outliers in the data. 
not sure if you would want to do that. Somebody asked me in my previous batch that do we need to do the action step that I'm taking? I said it's perfectly your choice. So you, what you can do is you can remove outliers also. So you can click on the bubble and you can say exclude because this is an outlier. You can similarly click on uh, New York and click on exclude. So it is going to remove uh, outliers from your data. And now your data is perfectly aligned without the outliers. Why do we remove outliers? Remember in our childhood days when we were doing statistics, whenever we are calculating averages, in case uh, one child scored like 1995 and rest of the class is hovering around somewhere in, uh, uh, I mean, I mean, like uh, 10 students got 95, but other 20 got 33 marks only. Somewhere our average is not going to reflect the true picture right so that is why we remove outliers so uh, to get a true picture of our data it's completely your wish how you're going to identify outliers and if you would want to remove those but we can remove these as well now uh, what are we going to do we are going to see that how can we color them now whichever visual i am on right that visual has to be definitely selected. And there is this paintbrush icon that I can see. This is format your visual. Click on this. Now, for every visual, there is going to be a different format your visual. Whatever options I'm seeing here might not be available for stacked bar chart. Right? So the option that I have is I have to go. I, I am looking to color my bubbles. So I will click on bubbles the size, then I see colors. Then I'm going to click on the function button. Why function button? Because I'm going to change the color, it's going to be static. So let's say uh, I'll select this as gradient only. There are other options like rules. We learn about rules in our subsequent session. What field should we base this on? So we are showing what we are trying to show is differentiation in the colors based on sales. So this should be based on sales. This will sum as sum only. Then it will be as zero. Lowest value should have like a red color. And highest value should have a green color. Fair enough. OK. And see, we've added color combination to it. So very interesting question somebody had asked me in the last session was that uh, what is the base that they take it as uh, uh, highest and lowest? So if we were to say uh, show as a table. So what it has done is that it has taken a relative performance. So it has taken like, um, like if we were to see Florida here on this. Where is Florida? OK, here it is Florida. So the color of Florida uh, is some different shade of green and Texas, Washington and uh, Pennsylvania. So whichever was like into uh, three digit thousands are in dark green. Whichever is in maybe a little less than that, they are in shade that we can see for Florida, rest all are in red, etc. So it's kind of Power BI has done a segregation that what all it is considering as highest or lowest. So it has computed a formula intelligently based on its intelligence and it has represented the color coding. Any doubt so far? Notes. Am I audible, guys? Yes, you're audible. Yes. Okay. So this was our map, right? Now we are going to see the field map. Field map in itself does not have much usage, but I don't know. You're going maybe you would want to publish it on your brochure. You would want to publish it in your dashboard, so you can use that. I did not see much benefit though, but this is our uh, field map. So field map, we are going to take maybe, uh, say, state as location. And we are going to take, uh, 
region here as legend. So I'm just trying to show what comes in the west region, what comes in the central region, what area comes in south and what comes in east. So in India, it's very easy to determine um, north, south, west, east. I don't know, India on map is so differently uh, this thing. But here, the region west is includes these things. Central is this because this is more flatter region. India is like kind of uh, vertically and horizontally. So this is more horizontally, this thing. So this is how it is divided. That region is this, south is this, and east is this. So in case you would want to publish it on your dashboard, just as a marketing tool or on your brochure, you can create a field map visual. Right? Next option that we have is of slicer. Now, my this visual is selected. The moment I'm going to create a slide, click on slicer, see everything got changed. So before you are going to select a new visual, it is very important that you unselect the previous one. So I've unselected, I've not selected any of the visuals. Now I'm going to click on slicer. So a new visual appeared in front of me. Right? Now let me select year from this. I have a slicer here. Now my system has a limitation that I cannot, uh, from this drop down, I cannot convert it into a different format. Uh, not sure if your system would have this issue, but my system has this issue. So for this, what I need to do is I need to go to the format your visual and I need to click on slicer settings, style, and I would say vertical list. I prefer seeing my data in the vertical list format than in the horizontal. So this is my small slicer that I have created. I can maybe place it anywhere. Right now, um, nothing is selected here, yet it is giving us all four years of data. The moment I'm going to click on 2015, it will give me only 2015 data. Nothing changed. Oh, changing. 2016. 2017, 2014. If I have to again get back to, uh, I can click only one thing at a time. So in case I still want four years of data, click on control button, left click on your mouse and select all four, select all four years. And you will see this. How are we so far? Okay. No questions, guys? Uh, can we exclude oh, one of the selections from this slice bar? Suppose we have four one four chart, right? But I want right. to uh, yeah, I want to de-affect one of the chart. You want what? Uh, let's say there is a one chart I don't want to know uh, that uh, select when, when I select this year one of the charts should not impact okay yeah can we do mm. you will have to create a DAX measure for that then because uh, just okay so when we go to sync slicers uh, let me check that if we are able to do that let me that comes in sync slicers only mm -mm -mm. 
So then what you will have to do is a uh, very good question. Whatever chart you're presenting, you will have to click uh, present it on a different page. And then you will have to um, uncheck that here from here that you do not want to sync that with the changes with the slicers. That ways all the changes that you're making in the slicer will not happen on that because these are dynamic reports and it will bound to make all the changes. But when you're going to present it on a different one, so we have two options here, add and sync with all the pages or select specific pages. So if you're going to present that chart on a different page and you're not going to select that, that in that case, your uh, whatever selections you're making, it will not happen on the other thing. Right? Right, correct, thank you. Awesome, very good question. So next comes our, um, because you guys have no questions, not many. So we're, I think we're going to wrap up early because uh, we are going to have one more um, session on Power BI. So I cannot really finish everything today itself. I mean, not that we will be in a position to finish it, but um, quite possibly we might finish like 10 minutes early. So uh, we'll come to the concept of row card. The moment I click hover on, uh, hover on any of the visuals, I get one of the options as card. Let me click on that. Right now, what is row card all about? Let me plot one data here say sales only so it is giving me sales now what is the benefit of row card in case i want to present my kpis my key process indicators i usually use row cards because it can give you only one aggregated value it can only carry one single value just give me a moment guys i'll have some water So it carries only one single value. So something that you would want to highlight as a KPI, you can use your row cards, right? So the moment I'm going to unselect uh, all of, say 2014 is what I've selected. The amount is changing 2015, it's going to change. 2014 and 15 amount is going to accordingly change. So row card will give you one aggregated value and it can be used as a key process indicator. I mean, I usually use this, use this for as a key process indicators because they stand out. Another option that we have is multi row card. So row card will have one option available but your multi row card can have many options like I can plot sales. I can plot segment also. So what it is giving me is that consumer segment has a sales of 532,000, corporate has 257,000, home office has 164,000. So this was about our row card and multi row card. What is the difference between two? In row card, we can only have one value. In multi row card, we can have multiple values. So I can even plot profit here. So consumer segment has a sales of these, profit of these. Corporate has a sales of these, profit of these. Home office has sales of these, profit of these. So we can plot different these things on our um, visual. Okay. Next one is...
I'm just trying to make some space. Uh, so, man, this KPI, whatever uh, we are saying, yeah. this is uh, uh, this is the sales of complete data sales data set, right? Absolutely. Or it is, or it is based on something. No, no, no. It's uh, like if I am going to select 2016, 14, 17, it will give me the aggregated value. So it is on complete data, nothing. So this data even you have. So these are the measures, some of the measures that we've created in our previous sessions. So forget these. But this is the base data that I am working on that you all have. So probably somebody had questioned that in one of uh, in my last session, I had pulled data from the orders table, whereas um, order table does not have that much data. But I think the data is still the same. Probably I renamed my file from master data to order table. I don't know. But data, whatever you have and whatever data I have, it's exactly the same. Right. So do not worry about anything. You're going to get the same results. Uh, in case you're working on row card, etc., the data is same, you're going to get the same results. But obviously you have to uh, remove duplicate rows, columns that we had discussed in the last session, right? Now, our next option is that, uh, let's select a pie chart here. And let's plot our uh, state-wise sales data, sales. And let's plot state. State comes in here. Let's see, this is how our visual is looking like. So if I hover here, I would know that it's uh, California, which is giving us 19% of sales. New York is giving. Again, I'm sorry. Why is this the voice here? is breaking. Okay, just give. Um, let me know in case I'm audible better now. Yes. Am I? Okay. Yes. Thanks. Thanks. So. Um, I mean, everybody can have their own different opinions, but when I see this much of data, I somehow start my eyes uh, start hurting. <laughs> there are so many colors and it's kind of, I'm not saying that uh, I'm a colorblind person and with due respect to others as well, but quite possibly some people are not very good with so many colors in one image. I mean, this is uh, il illusion, creating kind of an illusion for me so many colors running in so many such so much of data so for such kind of options what we can do is there is an option called tree map here in the visual i have this selected i'll click on the tree map and it has created this kind of a visual for me this still looks sorted it is not an illusion that it is creating for me at least i'm talking from my personal experience quite possibly you might have your different you might have a different experience so maybe i can add a third version to it maybe say profit let's see what happens so it has it is giving me an option of sales and profit maybe i can just do two only it looks a bit clumsy so you can use um, tree map as well this was the option of tree map. So uh, in our previous organization, we used to have this uh, in the Tableau, wherever we were to represent the account information, big accounts and the sales. Um, so basically I was managing the customer success team uh, where um, <clears throat> clients, so we had a policy that um, in case client comes up with a defect in our data, so $50 would be awarded in case whatever client said was correct. So this data was usually represented that what is the account value? So those were big accounts like DA Davidson, KPMG, PWC, et cetera, 700,000, 1 million, et cetera, used to be the account cost. And what all are the defects that they've pointed out? What is the budget? There are a lot of other things. 
So we used to represent that because pie chart was not very helpful in that. Just an option that I'm, I have to introduce you to. Okay. Now let's plot a table. I click on this table and I have this option. Now let's start putting in some information. I'll put some sales, I'll put some profit, region, and date. Maybe say, let me see all the dates. Now see here how complicated this data is if you were to read them. So I'm not saying that having a table here in the visual is completely useless. Uh, no, it might have a different usage. I'm just showing you a comparison that not everywhere the traditional table works. So this much of data does not come across as very healthy. Let me uh, pull it into a new page. <clears throat> So I just completely <clears throat> clicked on Control X, did nothing else. Control X and Control V. So this was my table. Now similarly, I'll have a matrix visual as well. <clears throat> now let me put my uh, sales profit region. Date. Now see the difference, how my data is coming across. Central region, sales and profit. I can collapse it one level. It will come as 2014 has these many sales and profit of this, Ta-da! whatever information. Quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four has this much of information. Quarter one, January, February has this much of data. Date wise, these are the dates on which we made sales and these are the profits or the losses that we earned on that. So see, data is more in a contained format. Whereas in table format, the data is kind of spread out in your uh, this matrix, uh, matrix. It is more concise, in more concise format. Okay. See, we can see more options here. Whereas in this table, I cannot see any other option, but in here and I can see more options. I'll come to this in our next session. But um, just for your information that wherever we have collapsible data, we'll have these um, tools that will appear, right? We'll discuss in next session because every session has a flow that we have to maintain. So I just thought of introducing it to you. Next comes our funnel chart. Let's click on funnel chart. And let me select my uh, subcategory. So in the product table, I have subcategory. I'll select subcategory and I'll select profit. So this is how the information is coming up. That copiers has the highest sale of 55,000. <clears> highest profit, sorry. Phones are giving us a profit of 44,000. Accessories are giving us 41,000. Now you would, um, paper is giving us 33,000. Now. One difference that you would see is that, uh, 
just give me a second. There is something different. Let me plot sales here. Oops. Phones are giving us highest sales. What is this highlighted getting here? I'm not sure what this highlighted here means. This is just coming today. Previously, it wasn't. It didn't used to come. So, guys, just give me a second, please. I'll just be back in a minute. Sorry to keep you on hold. So I'll check the highlighted part for sure. But uh, this is giving us the relative uh, performance information in a uh, funnel format. So what it is telling us is that phones was giving was giving us a sale of highest sales now relative to phones how much was chairs performing it was giving us some other sales i don't know why it is giving us as 470 percent but uh, the storage was giving us a sale of 89 percent the uh, storage was giving us a sale of 89 percent to the previous one so it is percentile format and not a percentage format. So percentile would mean like in CAT and other competitive exams. So if I've got a score of 99.99 and this is the highest score, now this will set as the 100% base score and all other uh, scores will be calculated basis my score, right? So this is what is all about that uh, it ca calculates the relative performance of the um products in a funnel format so it's bigger at the top and it narrows down as it reaches the lowest level right this becomes our funnel format then comes our 
ribbon chart that we are going to talk about. Now, this is our ribbon chart. We are going to plot it. Okay, now we are going to plot order date here. And along with that, we are going to plot sales. Have I selected something because of which the data is so? Now it's coming fine, the color. I don't know why it was previously coming like that. Harshal phone the Now, can you see that? I don't know, I did not do anything, but now it is giving us that highlighted part has just gone. Now it is giving me correctly the funnel chart. The phones are giving us a sale of 329,000. Chairs are giving a sale of 326%. Now the percentage of first or previous is 98.96%. Storage is giving us a sale of 222,000. Now the, uh, with, when compared to the first one, the phones, the per uh, percentage of sales is only 67% of the the storage the uh, sales that storage is deriving is only 67% of the phones, whereas it is 68% of the previous one that is the chairs. So tables is giving us a sales of 206,000, but it's 62% of the first one, whereas 92% of the previous one. I don't know why it, the data was coming like that, but uh, now it's fine and I'm happy. So next is our ribbon chart i just plotted this chart uh, from the visuals and i have plotted the year information and the sales automatically it has picked uh, subcategory as um, category and uh, sales as values right now what we are going to do is uh, we are going to plot segment if i'm going to select segment here the ribbon chart will not get popul uh, will not get populated properly because segment is selected as a category so what i'll have to do is i'll have to manually pull segment and pull it in the legend Oops. this is here let me select segment once here so now I mean, it automatically picked it up. So it selected segment as legend. I did not have to pull anything. There is a dark portion, there is a lighter portion, dark portion, lighter portion. So if I select on the dark portion, it says that 2014 for the consumer segment, the sales were 266,000. For corporate, it was 128. For home office, it was 89,000. The lighter portion is all about comparison that 2014 sales were x 2015 sales were y 2015 sales were this not 2015 and 2016 comparison 2016 2016 and 2017 comparison and then 2017 so, so one you can represent your in Right, this black box that we are seeing as we're hoping on a visual is called a tooltip. Now, the automatic information that is getting pulled uh, in the form of a tooltip, we can customize this tooltip as well. But um, this is called as a tooltip. I are clear so far now, as of now, right? Since we still have like 15 minutes, I'll uh, jump on to few other aspects as well. Okay. Can you explain Next. legends once? Okay. So what we've done is until I had selected segment, my information was coming as a uh, column chart only, right? There was no other information. Uh, simply it stated that what are the um, sales by year wise. So legend is thing but i simply selected segment i just simply selected another okay why did it burst okay 
segment is coming now in the other this thing i'll select segment as legend so it's like defining your legend that we do in excel that consumer segment is blue corporate is this and home office is this so it's just divided that data basis the segment and we are putting it into a legend because we want to categorize that what does blue, uh, light blue dark royal blue and um, this orange or whatever shade this is it must mean brown whatever the shade is so it's basically selecting three variables that we've put in into our data so your tree map, okay. uh, not not your rema but your ribbon chart would require usually three variables where uh, in order to present data correctly in a visual okay i hope i i was making sense yeah okay next comes our filter tab so one type of filtering that we can do is definitely from the slicers that we talked about more so if i select something here even that will filter my data right now another filtering that we can do is we can filter our data from this pane as well so there are usually um, if i have this selected with me i'll get many more options if nothing is selected i'll have the option filter on this page and filter on all pages do i want to apply a filter here only on this page or on or on all the pages of the report when i have a visual selected it will give me another option which is called filter on this visual so in case if i if i apply any of the filter on this visual it will only be applicable on this visual and definitely as it states on this page and on all pages we'll see it through examples as we move forward uh, that was about filter one now let's talk about these three tabs that we can see when i click on three dots i get the option as export data if i click on export data export this data this data can only be exported as a csv file so if there is something that you have created you would have the base data but if you are referring to somebody else's uh, uh, power bi report you would want the data for your per user right in that case you can export data in a csv file show data as a table the moment we are going to click on it it's going to create a small table just underneath the chart remove would remove this uh, visual from the uh, from the report that we are creating spotlight the moment i'm going to click it all other will be um, hazed out sort access in case i would want to sort it through in ascend or descending order or uh, i would want to move this to y axis and y to x axis i can do that as well here as we talked about focus mode it brings about the focus on the uh, on the visual that we were talking about and then there is this filter on visual quite it will work for many of you but my system has issues with respect to the slicers so this acts as a filter as well it will give you option that what is it that you would want to filter upon right now if i have none of them stated and i have to present no uh, when i used to be a kid and definitely this is something Your that uh, is it's followed till that whenever um am i anyway clearer now no ma'am not much just yes my internet and let me in case you can hear properly now or still no still same still same still same still kind of distorted okay i think i should be audible now 
Am yes. I? Awesome. Yes. Awesome. So um, when uh, we used to be kids, this was applied in in all the schools and techniques that we used to be told coloring used to be given boundaries, thick boundaries, such that so a child should know where is the boundary out of which I do not have to color. Similarly, somewhere down the line, it's still a mindset in all of us, even though we've grown up, we are grown adults, that we need to see boundaries right now. It becomes very, if you see these two tables sitting right across, there is no boundary. I mean, I personally do not like it, right? Um, I'm not sure about you. So it's always good to give some boundaries uh, to the um, to our visuals. So I've, I'll select this, I'll go to format your visual and I'll type in border here. So I think the screen is frozen. I'm not able to. OK, is it frozen for everybody else also? Yeah, it was. OK, let me share it again. So I have shared my screen again. And I'm on the visualization tab. Can you see that? Yeah. Awesome. So I'll put border here. And it is asking me an option, top bot, uh, border, bottom border, um, border, left, bottom border. It's a tongue twister, left and right. So yes, I would want it. And which color do I want? I'll go with the traditional black only. And it hasn't given a border. Why? Has it given a border? Or I can't see it. Oh, it has given a border. See, we have the border now. Let me put border on this visual. Quite possibly, it will be a bit better. I'll go to format your visual, and I'll search for the border in my this thing. <clears throat> and I'll see border on. Visual border on. And which color do I want? <clears throat> I want maybe a blue one. And here I have the border. Now that I've added a border, I don't need to go and add border to everything. Like we are already aware of Format Painter. I'll go here and click on all the visuals that I would want a border on. Format your painter, click here. and the border is added. So this becomes our <clears throat> adding a border. So once the border is added, the screen. So this way, you can add borders to your uh, frames as well, visuals. So this way, you can actually make out that uh, which uh, visuals are different from each other. So now everything has a border. And you know that they are separate. But I mean, you can definitely give more spacing as well. It's not as if that you cannot. But whichever way you would like, you can create more spacing as well, right? So next one that we are going to talk about is, like I was telling you about the tooltip functionality. How can we customize the tooltip? 
Now, if I'm here and uh, let's go to the previous chart only, something basic, let's pick up. So if I'm here on sum of sales by segment and I have to customize a tooltip, like if I have to plot my profit here, if I click on profit, it will give me as a separate column. But this is not the column that I want. I want it in the tooltip. How can I do that? So what I'll do is I'll unselect profit from here, but I'll scroll down in the visualize segment and I have an option called tooltip. I'll pull my profit segment here in the tooltip. Now see, if I'm hovering on any of my column, it is giving me sales and profit as a tooltip. Right? So what I simply did was I selected one of my charts, scrolled down in the visualization pane and came until under tooltips was there and simply pulled my values from here under the tooltip. And now I can see my information in the tooltip. Right? Now, last thing that we'll cover for our day would be small multiples. If I immediately your manager asks you that you that he or she would want to see the data region wise, what are you going to do? You're going to plot, you're going to create four separate charts, right? But there's another option that we have, and that is that when we go to the location table, we have region here. Let's pull that data into small multiples and see it has immediately created four smaller charts. So definitely you have one option that you create east, central, south, west, four separate charts. Another option that you have is that you simply pull the region data in the small multiples and it will give you this. Now small multiples is not available for every other uh, visual option. Let's see, is it available for uh, this one? It's available. State and region, small multiple for obvious re reasons will not be available, but is it available for a ribbon chart as well? Let's check it out. It's available. So, I mean, you'll have to check for which ones it is available, for which ones it is not. Like for funnel chart, it's not available. So this small multiples is not available for all the visuals, but definitely for quite a few. It's available. Right? Perfect. So this is it for the day, guys. Anything anyone would want to ask? Is there a way to rename anything within, um, you know, a chart? Yes, For example, there is. instead of sum of sales, can I just say sales? Stuff Absolutely, like that. you can do that. We'll come to that part as we move forward. So we have okay. ways that we can uh, um, change it, uh, like rename it. If, okay. Rename it. So if I am on any of the charts, say. Mm -hmm. uh, sum of sales by year or segment, I'll go to format your visual and I'll click on title. Ah. So title text is auto, but I can uh, customize it also. Uh, just give me okay. a second. Uh, color is function. It's picking auto. It is not allowing me a uh, title text segment. Sum of sales area. Here, let's see in case we can change. So we can say sales here and oh, okay, it's reflecting. Yeah, you can align it in central alignment as well, left right alignment as well. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect, right. You can create dynamic ones as well, but we are going to talk about that in the DAX session, how we can create that uh, 
uh, right now we have 20, 14, 15, 16, but if I'm only representing 15 data, then your title should highlight um, sales um, 2015 and segment. So you can okay. customize that as well. This is okay. not dynamic, this is static. Whatever you've mentioned, it will come like that only. But mm -hmm. we'll learn about that in the DAX session. Okay. Any okay, further cool. questions anyone has? Uh, no, that's it. Thanks. Thanks, Arun. Awesome, Prasanna. Thanks, Indra, Neelam, Pushpanjali, and Vijay. Thank you so much for joining in this session. Thank so, you. Yeah. thank you.